Hey, what's going on guys? Danny here. Hope you're all doing well. Just wanted to make this quick video regarding the recent update that LG rolled out for their 2019 uh, OLED televisions. This model here that I have is the C9 and uh, it's a great TV. Absolutely fantastic. Picture quality is amazing and uh, it's been great using it as a secondary, uh, using it for my secondary gaming rig, right? Uh, this TV also does support G-Sync, which is really nice. It's uh, It has a native 120 hertz panel. So, you know, I can, instead of gaming at 4K 60 hertz, I can downscale the resolution to 1440p and then set the refresh rate to 120 hertz for a really, really nice, uh, smooth experience. And I can also use G-Sync as well, which, you know, makes everything silky, buttery smooth. Um, so... LG recently updated uh, the firmware on this TV. Um, I can't remember what it's called. It's like 0 0.480 something. Hold on. Actually, let me just pull up the menu over here. Perhaps you guys can see it. Which one was it? Uh, let's go to general. Go about this TV. Yeah. So 0 0.4 or 04.80.03 was the recent update. And why this update was really important and why I wanted to make a video about it, because it actually pertains a lot to PC gamers as well. Um, so before this update, what was going on was that um, this TV does support eARC, so which is extended audio return channel. And if you have a receiver that you know also does support eARC, what you can do is just directly hook up the receiver to the TV's HDMI eARC port, right? And then hook up all your other devices. So whether that's your gaming PC, you know, like an Android box, your cable TV box, Blu-ray, whatever it may be, you just plug those all into the other available HDMI ports. And then, you know, you just gotta go into your, your sound settings and then sound out, just change that from internal speakers to HDMI arc. So automatically your receiver will be able to pick up all the sources whether it's the gaming pc and then automatically send out audio through your speakers that you have connected right now i have a 3.0 setup going on i have two mica bookshelf speakers the rb42s and then for my center channel i've just got a uh, rb42-c i do plan on expanding this uh, setup out to a 5.1 with the proper subwoofer Things like that are still coming along. I'll probably make an updated video on that. But uh, going back to the topic on hand. So the issue was that, you know, if you did have a good surround sound system to go along with this great TV, right? And you want to take full advantage of it. You actually couldn't do that with a gaming PC because the LG actually messed up the EDID. So what that meant was the eARC was limited to two channels uh, when streaming LPCM audio instead of eight channels. So what that meant was that if you had your TV hooked up to your gaming PC or your gaming PC hooked up your, to your TV's HDMI port and then you were using your AVR hooked up via eARC and you tried using the uh, surround sound system, you could only get stereo audio because it was only limited to two channels. So the workaround for this was that you actually had to directly connect your gaming PC to the to the AVR and then connect the AVR to the TV. So then you could get proper surround system. Um, problem with that is that if you were just gaming at 4K 60 Hertz, fine, it'll work. But, you know, with this TV that supports G-Sync, that has a native 120 Hertz panel, you want to take advantage of those features, right? Because that's what a lot of PC gamers buy this TV for. You couldn't actually do that then, right? You either, and the issue was that this AVR, it's the Denon S750H, it doesn't support G-Sync. It doesn't support a uh, variable refresh rate or, you know, it doesn't support, I think, it, I think it supports auto low latency mode. I can't remember, but for all those features, you want to be directly hooked up to the TV. So what the workaround for that was, you actually had to get a secondary display port to HDMI cable. Cause right now I'm running an RTX 2080 super gaming X trio. And let's see here on the back. You only have one HDMI port. Let me see if I can get some lights here. Yeah, so you only have one HDMI port and the rest are just display ports, right? So you have to get a display port to HDMI cable, connect a secondary cable to the to the Denon receiver, and then you just had to set it up in Windows such that 
your PC detects the AVR as like a secondary dead monitor. And then you could essentially have two monitors running onto the TV and then have the secondary monitors sound set set to your primary default. So if we go to your P go to my PC over here. Right. So if you were to go into your sound control panel over here. So there you have it. So essentially your AVR would be detected as well. And then you would just set that as your default sound playback. And then you'd be able to get surround. But I mean, that was quite of a quite a bit of a hassle to do. Um, not very convenient. And, you know, ideally, if you could just get ER to work um, with just one cable, then that's really what you should be going for. But you couldn't do that beforehand. So you either had to forego G-Sync and 120 hertz and connect this, the gaming PC directly to the to the Denon receiver. And then, you know, you'd have to, you'd be able to get your surround or you'd have to live with stereo audio for the time being and then, you know, get use G-Sync. So you couldn't get both. You either had to pick one or the other. Um, so yeah, recently what LG did, and I'll put up the 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 change logs up on the screen so you guys can read it. Um, but essentially, they updated the EDID, so now you can get eight channels through eARC, um, whereas before you couldn't. So before, what was going on was if you were to go on properties, and then go supported formats, and there you go, you have all these different formats that are supported, and then if you were to go to yeah, so there you go. Right there it says max number of channels 8. Before it didn't say that. Before it said max number of channels 2, just stereo. And uh, so you couldn't set anything before. So now if you actually go and uh, hit configure, you can set it to all these different uh, formats and configurations. And you even get Dolby Atmos for home theater, which is excellent because, you know, newer games like Rise Shadow of the Tomb Raider or Modern Warfare do support Dolby Atmos. So if you do have a really good high-end surround system set up and you do have, you know, a proper Atmos set up with ceiling speakers, for example, you will now be able to take advantage of that, which is excellent. So I'll give you guys an example of what I mean here. So I do have a little folder set up with movies. And I do have some trailers. Yeah, ignore that. So this is a little Atmos trailer and you guys can actually see. So as I started up this little trailer clip over here, it actually switched from stereo TV to Dolby Atmos, which is really, really cool. And it does sound excellent. The center channel is also now working. Now, the other thing I want to show you guys too was uh, Modern Warfare, which does support Atmos. Now, the irritating thing about this though is that for some reason on startup, and if anyone has a solution for this, let me know in the comments. When you start up Windows, it automatically switch has stereo selected and you actually gotta select Dolby Atmos for a home theater. Otherwise, when you launch the game, the AVR will just say stereo TV. But now that we've switched to Dolby Atmos and we launch the game. Yeah, I have Modern Warfare installed on an SSD and it still takes a little bit of time. Not too slow. All right, so I have the uh, intro video disabled so it doesn't go through any of that. But hey, as you guys can see, the AVR switched from Stereo TV to Dolby Atmos. So we know it's working. And I just wanted to quickly show here as well while we do have ARC enabled, or it says eARC, 
go over here, HDMI arc. So eARC is on. And while eARC is on, we do have G Sync enabled right here. Because the TV or the gaming PC directly connected to the TV and the AVR is connected to the ARC port. 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 That's what I meant. Port, not pork. <laughs> but yeah, essentially that's how it works. So now you can get a buttery smooth experience while enjoying full immersive sound. And if your game supports it, Atmos as well. So best of both worlds, great audio, great game experience, great picture quality. Now this doesn't also just apply to like people who have their gaming PCs hooked up to the TV. But uh, this was also an issue for LG's internal apps too, which was kind of sad. Considering, you know, those are just built-in apps. They should have just worked right away. But uh, even if you were using eARC and you tried to use those built-in apps, you wouldn't get surround sound. It wouldn't work. No Dolby Atmos, just stereo TV. You wouldn't be able to get anything through that. But now, you know, if we go to Plex, this is the internal TV app. If we go Movies... So I had a few movies already loaded up on here. You know, if we load up Shazam, for example. And you got HDR there. And there we go. Surround sound, Dolby Digital Surround, which is great. But the sad thing about LG's internal apps is that they don't have the proper decoder for Atmos. So while Surround does now work, you're still not going to get Atmos. But that's a whole issue entirely on its own, um, which hopefully uh, they might be able to fix. But they said don't count on it because it's more of like a hardware limitation. But don't worry, there is a solution for that. And uh, that is where this guy comes in, which does support Dolby Atmos. Lossless audio playback. But I just wanted to make this quick video just talking about the update because it's really cool. And, you know, this was one of the reasons why I bought this TV for so I could use G Sync and 120 Hertz. It's absolutely phenomenal experience. But what good is it if you do if you have such a great TV, but you are limited to such uh, such low end hardware uh, configurations. But now that's not the case. And using just one single cable through eARC and having all the devices and sources configured accordingly just works so seamlessly now. And I'm really happy about that. So good job, LG. Thank you for bringing out the update. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then hit that like button. Let me know your thoughts down below. Check out the video description for ways to support the channel. And if you're interested in more content like this, then make sure you're subscribed. Thanks for watching. Take care and I'll see you guys in the next one.